Hello photographers, today I wanted to share with you my iPad photography workflow. But before we do that real quick, I wanted to let you know that my t-shirts and hoodies are back on sale. If you want to support the making of these videos, you can get these in the doobly-doo thingy up here or the doobly-doo down below or the merch bar underneath the video. So the first thing you need to do is get your photos onto the iPad. And there are two ways to do that. The first is using an adapter. The second is using a cloud service. If you're using an adapter like this one, you plug your SD card into it and you plug that bad boy into your iPad. And when you do, it automatically brings up the dialog import as you can see here. Now it says that I've already imported these because this is about take 5,000 of this video. But what I'm going to do is tell it to import all of them. And once it's done, it's going to ask you if you want Want to save the photos on the card or delete them. I like to keep them on the card. One, it's a level of backup. Two, I prefer to format my card in the camera. So once the import's done, you can pop that adapter out. And now we'll move on to getting these into Lightroom. What you might think I would do is open up Lightroom and use the Lightroom import button and then go to the camera roll and pick all of these photos and then import them and then shut Lightroom and go back to the camera roll and select all of these photos and delete them because I don't want them in the camera roll and then close that and then open up Lightroom so that I can work with the photos. But that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, what I'm going to do is use something called a Siri shortcut. If you're not familiar with Siri shortcuts, it's this app right here on my dock and it's a system level app but you may not have it on your ipad so if you don't go ahead and download it from the app store what this does is allow you to create automations and i have an automation right here called last import to Lightroom. And what it does is it gets the last import of photos, it imports those photos into Lightroom, it deletes those photos from the camera roll, and then it opens up the Lightroom app for me. And this is the building interface for a shortcut. This is actually like your shortcuts that you can run. And my last import to Lightroom is down here. I'm going to hit that to run this process. And you can see the progress bar. It's already done the get photos part. It's already done the import to Lightroom part. Now it's asking me for permission to delete the photos. I'm going to allow it to delete those photos. And then as you can see, it is opening up Lightroom. Now it actually takes a second or two for those photos to show up in Lightroom. So we're just going to use the magic of editing to have those appear. Depending upon where Lightroom opens for you, you may not see the photos right away. You can see them in one of two places. If you go back to your catalog, area, you can choose recently added where it shows them in this sort of stupid one photo at a time. I imported this at this time view, or you can go to all photos where it will show those photos grouped together. What I'm going to do here is actually change the size of my thumbnails so that these are smaller and then I'm going to select these so I can organize them. So to do that I need to select this group of images which I'm going to do by touching the first one and holding down until this select dialog comes up and then just dragging my finger across all the rest of these photos to select all the ones that I want. With these selected I can choose this add to option down below and I'm going to go to 2019 and create a new album and this is how I name my album. You can name it whatever you want but I put an asterisk because that tells me that I need to edit these photos. And then I put portraits and then a dash and then the name of the model who is Angela May. And I hit OK and it's pre-selected. So all I need to do is hit this add option up above here. And now all of those photos have been added to my 2019 Portraits Angela May folder. Boom, they've been organized. Now I'm actually gonna take a moment to delete all of these photos so that I can show you how to import photos from the cloud. I'm gonna leave the album here just because I already showed you that process. But if you use the cloud, in other words, if you take your card and you plug it into your computer and then you throw them up into Dropbox or Google Drive or iCloud or whatever service you use, they'll go up into the cloud and then you can go here to your iPad, go to Lightroom, and you can choose the import button down here that has the plus next to the picture. And you can choose from camera roll, which we're not going to do, we want from files. And in my Dropbox, I have a folder here called Ice Queen. In here, I have all of these photos. And if I select all of these photos, I can import them into Lightroom. So once I've selected them all, I hit open, and then it will import these into Lightroom, which once again will take a moment or two, so using the magic of editing, we'll have them show up instantly. However, 
Here's a caution about using the cloud. The cloud storage files are not kept on your iPad. So what that means is you have to wait for each file to individually be downloaded to the iPad so it can be added to Lightroom, which means it's time consuming. I had to sit here for almost 10 minutes waiting for this thing to download. And I have a fast internet connection. So I would highly recommend you use the adapter rather than the cloud for importing your photos. So we have the photos imported. Now we want to edit them. If you're like me, you like to go through your images and you like to choose the ones that you want to edit and make your picks and reject or remove the ones that you don't want to edit. To do that, I usually start at the beginning and down here in the corner, you can hit this little star icon to bring you into the rating mode of Lightroom CC. On the middle of the image, you can swipe up to pick or swipe down to reject. All I do is I go through and I do exactly that. I'm just rejecting these images. These were all test shots as I was working out the lighting. And if I find one that I like, let's pretend this is one that I wanna edit right here, I swipe up to make it a pick. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole process. I'm just going to zip down here towards the end and pick one that I know I wanna edit, like this one right here. We'll call that a pick. And then we can go into the editing process. Editing here is pretty much like editing in Lightroom on the desktop. You go into the panel that you wanna work in and you make your adjustment. Now for this, I'm going to actually take my brightness down to under halfway. Whether you're on a traditional desktop or laptop computer or an iPad, when you edit your photos and adjust things like exposure, you should have the brightness level of the screen at 50% or less. So we're gonna take that exposure and we're gonna bring it up hmm, about a stop and a quarter, I think. And then we're gonna add a bit of contrast and we'll pull back some highlights to get more detail back into the fog. I'm not gonna lift up the shadows at all. I'm gonna leave the whites and the blacks alone. We're gonna pop up the vibrance and the saturation a little bit to enhance the colors. I also like to add a bit of clarity. And I'm a person who doesn't do a ton of edits in Lightroom. So I'm showing you my entire Lightroom editing process right now. I have that clarity. I come down here to detail. I take my sharpening up to about 60 and then my masking up to about 90. So that's all I do. You can obviously do much more here if you want to. And once you're done, if all you want to do is edit your raw photos, then boom, you're done here in Lightroom and that's great. However, if you want to edit further, then you can use this app here called Affinity Photo, which is very much like Photoshop for the iPad. And this is what I use to edit all of my photos. In order to get a photo from Lightroom over to Affinity, you have to export the photo. So to do that, you hit the share option up here, and then you choose open in and maximum available because you want the largest resolution size image, and then copy it to photo and it will open it up in Affinity Photo. Now this is my particular workflow and I'm not going to do every single step of my workflow just because it would take, you know, a couple hours, but I am going to show you the basics of what I do. One of the first things I do is cleanup. So to do cleanup on an image like this, I always create a blank pixel layer. And then I use the clone stamp tool and what's called the in-painting brush tool, which is similar to the healing brush tool in Photoshop to do my cleanup. For example, we use pasties on Angela's uh, breasts and you can see there's an edge along that pasty there. I wanna clean that up. So I'm going to switch over to this in-painting brush tool. One of the keys of using this cleanup tech technique is changing your tool to sample from the current and below layer. And then with my brush, I can just paint along this edge here and you can see it just heals that, it fixes that up like magic for me. Now that's not perfect, but like I say, I didn't wanna spend the entire time doing all of the steps. That just gives you an idea. Once cleanup is done, I move on to my skin softening action. It is called a macro here in affinity, but it's basically just like an action in Photoshop. So I run this action, it does its thing automatically and creates the skin softening layer. The principle here is that you have a layer that has a mask on it and that mask hides the layer until you brush on that layer to reveal it. So I'm going to brush on that layer to reveal the skin softening below. And when I do that, I set my flow to about 10% and my color to white and I make sure my mask is selected, which it is, and then I brush on the parts of the skin that I want to soften. Now I'm deliberately making this a little bit more aggressive than I would normally do so that you can see the results of the skin softening. What I actually do once I'm done 
is take the layer and reduce the opacity to around 50 or 60 percent to lessen the effect and make it look more realistic. After that, I have a dodge and burn action that sets up my dodging and burning layers. That is also uh, a, a process that I do to every single image. And I have a skin and a hair layer. So I'm going to grab just very quickly to show you again what it looks like. And I'm going to have this be way more aggressive than I normally would, just so you can see what it does. Dodging lightens an area. So I just lit that highlight on her skin and made it brighter and then burning darkens an area. And then once the dodging and burning is done, I do the eyes. And what the eyes does is create three different layers that allow me to sharpen and brighten the eyes. Each one of these layers has a layer mask. The first layer mask is to reveal some sharpening. That's going to be so subtle that you won't even see it. The next layer of that mask reveals a brightening layer. That is to brighten up the whites of the eye just slightly. And the next layer is to darken the pupil of the eye, also very subtly, as well as the edge of the pupil, which is hard to see at this level. With that very quickly done, I'm going to group these layers together. And if I turn it on and off, you once again should be able to see a difference in the eye. That's my basic editing process. Now I do more things. In this image I would do more stuff like add some background texture and maybe add some more fog and things like that. But I just wanted to detail the basic editing process. So once you have an image done, you need to get this image over to Lightroom because this is your final edit. And this is a bit of a problem because Affinity Photo has its own proprietary file type. And you have to make a choice on how you want to handle this. I'll explain how I handle it and why I handle it that way. And then you can decide how you want to handle it. In order to get this photo saved somewhere, you need to either save a copy of it or export it. You would choose save a copy if you want to save it in the native file format that Affinity Photo uses, which is this AF Photo file format. That's what I have chosen to done as of late. And the reason I'm doing that is because the translation into a PSD isn't perfect. And a PSD, a Photoshop native file, is not a great file format to begin with. It's a very old file format, but it's not a very good file format. And what I do is I choose save, and then it comes up and it brings me up to files, and I save it into iCloud Drive into a folder called Affinity Originals. So when I add that, that exports the photo to Affinity Originals. The next thing I do is go to export. And the export is where I get to Photoshop. You can choose a different file format, and I choose TIFF because I want an uncompressed file format. And then I'm going to export that so that it can go to Lightroom. Now, my export process is actually a bit complicated, but it's also automated. The easy way to do it is just to copy it to Lightroom using the share sheet right here. And if you do that, it'll literally just import it right back into Lightroom. If we go back, you can see now that I have the original right here and then the TIFF file right next to it. But I deliver photos to my collaborators using Dropbox. Now, if I wanted to send them this, I would have to take another step, which is to go here save to files, choose maximum available, find the folder on Dropbox, and that's just the full resolution size. If you wanna make a image that's sized, optimized for social media for them, that's a whole nother export process. It's It has many steps. You can do it that way if you want. I actually use an automation with Siri shortcuts. So what I do is, from Affinity Photo, instead of exporting that TIFF into Lightroom, I actually export it into a holding folder. So here I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to bring up the Files app. I'm going to go to iCloud and choose Shortcuts and choose Exports. And that's a holding folder. Now, I wouldn't do this next step until I was done editing all of the photos from this photo shoot. But I'm going to show you how it works with just this one photo. I have a series shortcut, and this series shortcut is called Export Photos. And you can see here what it actually does is run one, two, three, four, five other shortcuts. 
and each shortcut does a different thing. So I'm going to show you how that works. Much of this is going to happen in the background, but you'll see my interactions. So I hit play to run this. First, it's doing this thing to size and save the JPEGs. And now I have it wait to make sure that everything can upload and transfer over to where it needs to be in the cloud so that it doesn't break things. And now it imports that TIFF into Lightroom, and it's going to wait a few seconds to give Lightroom time to do its thing. And then it's going to open the app. And the reason it opens the app is because I want to be able to organize that image and put it where I want it to be. And then I go back to shortcuts. It deletes that photo, that TIFF file, from that export folder that I put it in. Now it's going to wait for two minutes. And that, again, is to allow things to happen in the background and make sure all files have gotten to the place that they need to be so that they can be automatically moved over to the folder for the model. So we'll just wait. And now it's asking me who the model is. And I have it populated with a menu that allows me to pick people that I regularly work with or specify a new model or a model that I've already worked with in the past that isn't a regular model. So I'm going to choose Angela May because this is Angela. And it's again going to wait two minutes to allow things to happen in the background. So we'll skip that again. And the next thing it does is opens Dropbox. And the reason I have it open Dropbox is to make sure that the photos are in the Dropbox. And I can see them under the recent Here's the one that's in the full resolution folder, and this one is in the social folder, size and optimized for social media. So those are there, which means I want to go back to shortcuts. So we can do the last thing, which is get the model's name. And it asks me if it's a new model because I have a slightly different message for a new model versus a model I've worked with in the past. Angela is a regular collaborator. I message her in Messenger. So it copies all this information to the clipboard, and then I can choose Angela, and then I can paste the message, and you can see it's there, and then I can send it. Now, I'm not going to send it because I'm not done with the edit, but this is how I manage and edit my photos right now because I love editing on the iPad. I love using this interface, and I believe that editing on some sort of a tablet or touch computer is the future. It may be a Microsoft Surface, it may be an iPad, but I believe this form factor is going to be the future. And I wanted to give you a look at how I've been editing all of my photos for the past six months. I know this was a lot to take in, so if you have any questions about this iPad photography workflow, let me know down in the comments. And if you are trying to figure out how to use an iPad for your photography workflow, please put any questions you have also down in the comments because my workflow may not be perfect for you, but I could certainly try to help you build a better workflow for you. Now, before I go, again, a quick reminder that my t-shirts are available. You can get them here. You can get them down in the doobly-doo or in the merch bar. And I do have a question for you, which is, what do you think about editing and managing your photos on the iPad? Do you think I'm wrong that this is not the future or do you think I'm right? Let me know down in the comments and then make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and get out there and take some damn photos. iPad photography workflow take 4,377 recording this video has been a show.